Hey guys, welcome to the season premiere. Season two has just officially launched. This is the Girl Techno Podcast. I am your host, Shawnee Sanders. And today I have two special guests with me. I'm so excited. I got Jack Sams. And I got Nikki Diverja with me, guys. You guys should know them already. They was on season one of the Girl Take Them podcast. We had great conversations with them both. I decided to bring them back for season two premiere because I love how we have conversations. You know yeah. what I mean? So how are you guys doing? Doing good. Doing good, great. Good. Listen, how was 2022 for you guys? Wow. How was twenty? It was actually great for me. You know, you know, I got married in twenty twenty two, and I'm yes. really beautiful. And- yes. Nothing but blessings. Even though, you know, I'm not going to harp on nothing negative. It was a great year. Okay, what about you, Jack? Um, <laughs> it was, it was a really good year. Um, mm-hmm. You know, the, it was. I think it was a time of discovery, yeah. letting go, um, which could be good and a little bit scary at the same time. Mm-hmm. And um, and so, you know, overall, it was a great year. Yeah, 2022 was a great year. I can officially say, and I think I said this in my last episode for season one, that we had over, the Girl Techno Podcast have over 3,300 downloads. Oh, and I, I was super it. excited about that because I know, right? Because we just launched in October. And so it just means 3,300 of you people out there must really like this because y'all listening to it, y'all download it. So I am super excited. This is why I'm super excited to bring season two now and have more guests, more great co-hosts. And so I want to get started with what we are talking about today so the name of this show is stop blaming black women and the reason why i picked this topic is because as i scroll through social media tiktok and instagram i get so tired of seeing videos and lives of black men on these different videos and lives talking about just talking down about black women and particularly single black mothers and so I want to play a video for you guys and I want you guys to give me kind of like your reaction and we're going to get into this discussion. Okay. okay. So let me pull it up. I found it on TikTok. I'm going to share my screen. And I I'm telling you once you see this, you're going to be like, what the heck? I'm I'm excited now. I'm like wondering what are we going to see? Yeah. was a teenager and I was running these streets is because this woman was too busy working and caring about herself. She didn't put me in no sports. She didn't put me in no after school program. She didn't put me in nothing that was going to help my life so I wouldn't run the streets for my gang robbing people. You feel me? That's what hurt me. And that's what's hurting a lot of these kids getting raised by single mothers who think they know it. She moved me from my dad. These millennial black men are killing their girlfriends and their wives. They have been raised by single black women. They have adopted these black women emotions. They don't know how to control their emotions. So what they do is when they find out that they can't control that woman that they're with, they kill. So here we have two perspectives to get to the same point. If you listen to this young man's story, he's telling the truth. He shouldn't be chastised. He should be commended because he lifted himself up after admitting what he did wrong. And he's clearly angry because he was taken away from his father. And from the woman's perspective, it is a state of emergency because we have too many men being reared solely by women. And the only reason is they like the monetary gain. <laughs> It's about child support. They are keeping these kids away from their father so they can make the money. <laughs> okay, so I wanted to play that clip. Yes. So I wanted to get it bigger on the screen so we could really see it, but I couldn't figure out the configurations. But I wanted to get the blind reaction to that because when I saw this on TikTok, I was floored. First of all, for me, the young man that blames his mom for him being in gangs and him choosing the wrong path in life, you know, getting put up in jail. And I'm just like, it's, a, it's her fault because she's too busy working and worrying about herself. But I'm like, I'm pretty sure your mom told you 
to stay away from them goddamn gangs, right? I'm pretty sure your mom told you to get the right path. So why is it your mother's fault for the choices that you made? I mean, I was just blown away how he, the lack of disrespect he has for his mother and to blame black women for the state of black, just the other woman, just to blame black women, single black mothers for the state of black men killing their wives and girlfriends. I don't even know where that shit came from because to me that shit was just ridiculous. Either, as far as I'm concerned, I do have to agree with one point he said that the little, the, the, the little boy, I'm not even going to say young man, the little boy was obviously upset with his mother for the fact that he's no longer with mm -hmm. his father. I get that part, but how, what, I mean, what is going on with him even trying to blame his mom i'm sure his mom was working all those jobs to take care of him you know mm -hmm. i'm sure mm -hmm. that she was doing that to make sure there was food on the table but yet he was so bitter and yeah. angry because his father was not around he's really looking at it in the wrong perspective and and somebody needs to get that couple go and get that boy because at the end of the day he's going to take that into his other relationships any relationships i'm sure he's taking into his, his relationships Oh, and yeah. the way he treats women and I'm sure the way he speaks to women is definitely affected. And that's just horrible. But, you know, it's so interesting. I agree with you. It is horrible. It's and it's ridiculous. OK, mm -hmm. um, it's a classic case mm -hmm. of entitlement. That's exactly okay? what it is. It's a mm -hmm. classic case of entitlement. How dare you? <laughs> Your mother's working. She could not be working. Okay. And for your choices, the thing about it is nobody mm -hmm. wants to take responsibility for their actions. Those are nope. your choices. We are all been giving choices. We get that's 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 the way of the world. We choose. You can go down this path or you can go that that path. Like you said, yep. I'm pretty sure your mom told you to go down the right path, right? And <laughs> you sure probably, she, did. she did. You probably because of your attitude, you obviously he seems oh, like he's full of you attitude. Feel like he's angry. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so you probably you probably mm -hmm. didn't listen to her. You probably told her to be quiet and stay out your business or whatever. Or you probably lied or 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 you didn't tell her. Whatever you were doing, you were making your own choices. And I can and guarantee blame. you. I can guarantee and you know, he's disrespectful with his mouth to his mother because of the way he, he's talking Very dis already. No, of course he, he was. Dis and where the way he shows up right here, I'm pretty sure he shows up in his life exactly that way. exactly that way. And the fact that he mentioned wouldn't put him in after school programs, wouldn't put him in football sports. You know, first of all, maybe a mother didn't have money have to do money. that because none of that stuff is free. And exactly. so she did the best she could and told you to stay mm -hmm. away from certain elements, and you chose to go there. And even when it comes to his dad, took mm -hmm. him away from his dad. He would have been there. That wanted to be there. He yeah, would have been. Be there. That part. Exactly. That's just it. There would have been nothing stopping your dad from being a part of your life. So don't blame your mom or your single mother if your father is not a part of your mm -hmm. life. I just Terrible. don't understand that. And I think what bothers me the most is that when I hear conversations like that, comments like that, is that no woman wakes up and say, "Okay, I want to be a single mom." Nobody I'm gonna be a doesn't. single mom, guys. Nobody nah. plans to be that. That shit just happens. Two people don't work out. And then all of a sudden, dad don't want any part of it. Right. Or maybe dad is a part of it. Maybe he's just not right. doing as much as he should be doing. You well, know, you so know, I just feel like the blaming and the, you're right, Jackie, the entitlement. It's the entitlement. And you know, they say black women are the most unprotected. Did you see that? As ad? opposed to oh. black men. Not like ad, women, but... it, we, we're yeah. unprotected. And, and even now it's going as far as to be unprotected by and your that's own. that's scary. Children by your own children and, yep. and and she probably gave what she can all she could to her her child i'm yeah. pretty sure that she she went and i i'm not i have i don't know these people but i'm pretty sure she went above and beyond what I she agree. could her oh, yeah. capacity so now I you're agree. judging me on my I, capacity mm -hmm. right you don't know her story I, I, that, her that hurts man mm -hmm. but if you're saying that she worked she yep. worked she was right. working, it's not like she was she on the street doing drugs or anything yep. she was actually yep. trying to take care of him and yep and never once did he say never she, he was abused by her. That, that's never a whole other story. Never once. He didn't say I was abused by her. She talked down to me. She she mistreated me. She, none of that. None of that was none going that. on. Right? No. You just said that she didn't put you in sports. Oh, well. Okay. You had food. Hey, that you had you a, had a shelter roof over your head. Without the father. Yeah. Without the and father. That, Come on. Yeah. And it's just so, and then you take it to a public forum and it's Very so disrespectful. disrespectful. You know what I mean? Like it's so disrespectful to your mom and being a single parent is not easy. Once I was offended because I was raised by a single parent and all my siblings were raised by a single parent. We raised by my mom. My mom raised five boys. Yes, my mom raised five boys and none of them made the choices that he made. You know what I mean? So it's not about 
who you're raised by. It's about the choices Correct. you make as a kid. You made that choice to go and get out there and be with the wrong element. Right. And you put yourself in jail. But he's walking around this world blaming his mom for the things that went wrong in his life. And you know what this makes me think about? Because I just watched um, Love and Marriage DC. And I just watched an episode where the Tylers, um, God, it's still so crazy. I can't remember his name, but the Tylers, their son displays that same type of mm. um, entitlement. Right. Where his father gives him a hundred dollars a week, his grandmother and his father got him a car, and he's and like he'll get to a place where he won't talk to them because he get an attitude with them, and he feels like one it's just not enough to the point where he tried to fight his father, oh, he tried no. to fight his dad, and I'm and he's it's like just it's, it's so spoiled. And, These and kids you are know, spoiled and entitled. I want to say spoiled. I grew up when my mom used to beat the crap out of me if I was out of line, and I also grew up when my neighbors could beat the crap out of me mm -hmm. if they saw me on the street and I was out of line. Now. It's like all mm -hmm. these new rules that parents can't be rules. parents. And I'm like, yeah, I'm regulations. Birth to these kids. Are you trying to tell me how to raise my child? Yep. This, that, something is wrong yeah. with this mm -hmm. world, period. And it, it's very, yeah. It, yeah. it's scary to know that that's what's going on right now. And it's like, who gives whoever in charge to tell you how to raise your kids? You know, extremely. Well, I'm disappointed. Yeah, I, I'm disappointed. I'm mm -hmm. disappointed in that kind of behavior. I'm disappointed, and I and am I'm disgusted. Not surprised though. I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm not surprised. I, I'm not surprised because and, when you when you try to give, and I'm pretty sure when you when you mm -hmm. when you try to give, give, yeah. give, give, and not let a That's child work happen. for something <laughs> and understand responsibility, you know, that looks like a classic case of. She probably worked so hard she didn't show him. Because she probably just gave him whatever. Working, yeah. Right? So she probably just tried to work hard and give him the sh nice shoes or try to, you mm -hmm. know, just provide it and, and not yep. really give him some insight to what life is about on the end of taking care of bills and all of that. You don't, that is a, I'm a mother and and it's expensive to put your kids oh, yeah. in that activities. What but I you know, growing it's a up. sacrifice. But you know, I noticed growing up that I, yeah, but growing up, I know my mom, like my mom talked about how she struggled, how she didn't have, but we did. So our parents didn't really let us see the struggles of parenthood. You know what I'm saying? Because my mom always, I always thought my mom was good. You know what I mean? But I didn't know my mom was walking around with holes in her shoes. Right. You know what I mean? Just so her kids can make sure they have, you know, shoes and stuff like that. I didn't know my mom was suffering through certain things just so she could have, but I just feel like our parents... I don't know. They just taught us different values. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I, I, I started been, yeah. working at the age of like fourteen. You know, so I wasn't no, I, I wasn't a kid mine. that got everything I wanted. I worked for mine. So I had a job and I worked for it. My mom didn't just give it to me. I worked for it. I had my own money. You know, she taught me, yeah. how, yo, you want certain things, you're gonna have to work for it. And that's what I did. And I don't see nothing wrong with that. I feel like today parents don't want their kids to even. They feel like, oh no, they need to just focus on school. They can't just exactly. focus. I was able to work and focus on school. <laughs> I don't yeah, know. These kids I don't do two know. things and, at and one time. They don't even know how to communicate, let alone, you know, appreciate anything that's being given to them that, you know, out of love. You know what I mean? I mean, you can sit, mm -hmm. these kids don't even know how to talk to each other. Like, I mean, I don't even know, let alone talk to their parents. They're, dis they're disrespectful. No. I see some of these kids, and, you know, when I go to Target or yeah. wherever, a grocery store, and some of them are having tantrums and or back talking to their parents and i'm like what is in the water like what's mm -hmm. going on I, I didn't grow up like this i didn't grow up like this. i don't even know so yeah i didn't either i guess like you said we yeah. grew up in that that um ass whipping stage where you got an ass whipping like you did it wasn't mm -hmm. abuse it was just you got out of line mom's gonna right. put you in line and that's just what it was for us you know and it was a healthy fear that we had for our parents it wasn't like oh i'm afraid of my mom no i just knew that if i did something and, and, wrong my mom's gonna whip my ass I, you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying like right. and i'm not gonna do nothing wrong because i don't want to get that today, that's, making just, it that's just what like it was that was abuse to the point that I don't see it that way. I wasn't mm -hmm. afraid of my mom. I was afraid of the fact that if I did something wrong, no. I would have to pay the consequences. But mm -hmm. I respected my mom. Like, come yep. on. Like, that's crazy. That's, no. Yeah. But I just think the blaming part is what gets me is that even that second video of this woman talking about these black young men 
killing their girlfriend and wives all because they were raised by single black women they adapt to single they that women emotions and i'm just yeah. saying to myself that's more of a mental health issue versus a single mother issue i just don't understand the blaming part you know what i mean it's like why are you as a black woman you know what i'm saying on this thing and blaming other single black mothers it makes for something what's her that situation? their kids do what's her situation like grown her adults to come out and say that exactly what's she dealing with you know the thing about it is that it's crazy because I had a different experience. My mother was, uh, she was an entrepreneur. So mm -hmm. I, I, she had me working very, very early like you guys. Um, but I understood, I didn't even know we had right. it. I didn't think we had it. So <laughs> exactly. I, it was the opposite. We had it, mm -hmm. but I thought, I thought we didn't have it because <laughs> she, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I was like, man, we got bills to pay. Uh -huh. You know, and I would always ask, how much does this cost? Or, you know, I wouldn't ask for a lot of things because I saw her working so hard. Yeah. Now I have a younger brother that didn't have the responsibility. Mm -hmm. And he oh, reminds wow. me of that kid. Mm. Yeah. Entitled. Yeah, there it is. Entitlement. Entitled. And, and, and we were raised by the same parent, but we were parented differently. Mm -hmm. because he's very entitled as and as a and maybe it is something that mothers do with their sons I yeah said, that's I a whole know. nother that that's a whole so i think whole that's something thing. true to that too i think it's because, a lot true to that because as a, as raising women we're like hey you need to do this or you know but raising your son maybe you're softer on them mm -hmm. and and a little more um uh, babying them yeah uh, but i see that I see the entitlement and, and, yeah. and the, the, to me, you might not blame and say, Oh, I, I didn't have this. And this is why that, that might not be the conversation, but your life and the way you don't go for it. And you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's just entitlement, and, you know what I'm saying? And it so is that's, entitlement. That's, that's just like, you think that it's just, maybe she, I, I can, well, I can say that we were just parented differently. I had to work a little bit harder. Yeah. He didn't, but his life's his, his life looks like a little, the same. A little Mama's boys, right? Yeah. Saying, right? I noticed mama's that mothers boys. are, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. That is a definitely Not a the saying. mama's boys, and so mm -hmm. I, I would I would love I would have loved to have his mother um, speak. Yeah. At, oh speaks, yeah. Like, mm -hmm. You know, I would, know, I would love too. to know her story. Like, I would too, because as a parent, you think you're just doing what you're supposed to do the best you can. And you're not thinking that I don't think no parent think that they're raising a child that's entitled. You know what I'm saying? I think as a parent, you're just saying, hey, I just want to make sure they have what I didn't. I just want to make sure they have what they need. I don't want them to have to work because I worked at a young age. I want them to do things differently and have something different. So I don't think parents intentionally raise, try to raise entitled kids. I think it's just something that happens along the way think, because they get it. I don't think so there's easy. anything wrong with having your kids. You know what I mean? To be honest with you. I think it, I grew up to be great. You know, I, no, I plan on doing the same thing with, with my kids, and I, I really do believe that this generation, all they do is live on social media, on their phones, and they're getting all this bad information yeah. from online. And I think they need to be, there needs to be going outside, going outside to play. You know, people don't do that anymore. Everybody's on their phone or on some yes. sort of. No, you know, they don't. Tool or iPad or something. They need to go outside, play double dutch, play, you know, ride your bike. This what? Play ring, ring Olivio, something. You know what I mean? <laughs> Skelly. You know. You know today's socially listen. Today's generation of kids are socially of awkward because of devices. They really are. These kids in this house, like you take those devices away, they become like crackheads. They, they don't know what to do. They're around. They don't know what to. They don't know what to do without their device. Aiden literally paces up and down when his device is charged. He paces back and forth, back and forth. And it's, it's not an addiction. Good. That's why I keep telling people these tablets and these electronic devices are good. an addiction, and it's not good. You know what I mean? Because we're kind of like we depend on them because it's like it makes them like okay, he ain't bothered. They're not bothering me, right? So get the tablet and leave me alone kind of thing you know what i mean but at the same time we have oh kids killing their parents because of their devices it's crazy you know what i mean 
I mean, okay. is that the fault of a single black woman, ma'am? Miss who talking? I mean, that's a two parent household. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I just feel like society to me, especially particularly black men, always blaming black women for almost everything. You know what I mean? When it comes to the way we wear our hair, when it comes to relationships, when it comes to how you raise the kids, how you dress. You know, the other day I was, I was saying that only black women, when you, not black women, when you go on these lives or when you go on different um, right. platforms and you see these live conversations, you only see a group of black women <laughs> talking down. My, my dog keep hitting my microphone. Talking down to a bunch of talking down about black women you Any never go on live that. and see like a group of white no men. other race no other race does it and then i bet you black men would say the reason why they don't do is because their women are submissive mm. and this word submissive it's just been thrown around so it's much horrible. out of the mouths of black men it to the point where i'm like i don't even know they mm -hmm. if they know what it means anymore Right, and right. every woman is not going to submit to every man. It's not. Like every man not. is not. And a leader. you know, you have it's to. Just not. Right. You have to be that a man. If you understand what I'm saying, you have to take responsibility. You need to take care of home. Mm -hmm. You need to do what you got to do to take care of your your woman and your family. And if you're not doing that, how are you expected yeah. to get any type mm -hmm. of respect? I mean, I just don't get that. I don't get that at all. I did see the other day. I don't know where <laughs> yeah. it was. It was somewhere. I don't get it. I don't know if it's Chicago, or whatever, but men taking care of women and protecting their women at the gas station. Did you see that? With the men, the men were actually pumping mm. their gas, no, didn't. making sure they were safe. And they were, you know, and it, it was wow. outside of, you think like a grocery mm -hmm. store type of thing, gas station, carrying their bags to the car. They're like, nobody else is going to protect our black women but us. And these black men were out there protecting these black women. That's and it. I just loved That's it. it. I loved it. I loved it. We need that. that we was need it as, as a community. They need it. That is amazing. Yes. That's more. They do need to show that more. You see what I'm saying? I should have been able to see that versus that part. all the different negative conversations about black women. You know, I saw this TikTok of a, a white woman saying to other white women, you know, you guys are getting upset about black women and, and them having a space where they, they, they want to feel heard and protected. She, mm -hmm. They said, she says, do your history. This is coming from a white woman. Mm -hmm. She says, black women had to go through the horrific um, things of, mm -hmm. of, of having their families torn apart, taken from them, having having their babies, you know, taken from them, mm -hmm. while nursing your babies. Yep. I mean, nursing, she said, nursing our babies, taking care of our children that would turn around and beat them when they got older. And wow. disrespect them and hurt them, and they still had to love and take care of these kids. So please, please, like, <laughs> they, like stop. You know what I mean? And so I thought that was a very interesting perspective. It is, but that is definitely something right. that it's been from the test of time. You know, mm -hmm. where we've had to be so strong and we've yeah. had to be blamed and ridiculed, um, and 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 then and then say, hey, well, what are you tripping about? You know, yeah. you're supposed to do this. You're supposed to, and as, as right. a matter of fact, you're supposed to do more. You're not doing enough. Yeah. Yeah. And I think you that's know? the problem that the, today's black man doesn't get is that a lot of women don't choose to be they don't want so to be. strong don't choose to be don't, don't want, want to, to be. be like oh right. i do it all it's because we have to do it and that's what confuses me when they're on the conversations with these single women they're like well why are you so independent um hello i'm single i live by myself i take care of myself so that's why i'm independent if you don't have a man and i think it's a, a husband, cycle that goes over and over again because we've seen our parents but, do it we think that's what we're supposed to do us women we need to learn how yeah. to let the man take the lead and take care of home because we're just so used to just doing 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 if yeah. we don't stop mm -hmm. doing and allow them to do what they're supposed to do that's never going to change right so it you know there's nothing yeah. wrong mm -hmm. now that is true because i know for me that was a problem for me because i was raised by a single very strong independent woman and she taught me how to be independent and do things on my own and so when I come into relationships, men used to say, oh, well, you act like you don't need nobody. And I had to think about that. And I had to realize and say to myself, like, okay, Sean, you know, if you want to be with somebody, right, you're going to have to curb that type of behavior. You don't have to be, you don't have to lead every situation. Right. You can sit back and let somebody else take control. You know, just don't, <laughs> you know, drive me into no ditch. Now I'm going to catch us before we get there. <laughs> 
I'm not going to lose it all for you now. <laughs> but, you know, it was something that I definitely had to learn because, you know, we're raised by single parents. And so when you're raised by a single parent and all you see is a strong single woman, then that's what you emulate. And not to say my father wasn't there. Right. My father was around, but he wasn't in the household with me. And so what I see is what I emulate. And I saw my mom being strong and I saw my mom doing it all. You know, I didn't see my mom in a relationship because my mom didn't have no one around her kids. Mm -hmm. I didn't see my mom in a relationship until she got older. And then when I would see her, like, she'd be so submissive. Look at her like, what's you know? going on? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. When did you become this woman? You know what I'm saying? But I didn't see her in that dynamics. And to see her like older in that dynamics, I was like, oh, okay. And she's like, yeah, you need to make your husband plate first before you eat. You make your husband plate before your kids eat. You make his plate. And I'm like, um, okay, mom, you know, I didn't know this is how you roll, but okay. I'm seeing you mm -hmm. differently now, which made me look at things differently too. But I just feel like it's like you said, it's a cycle. I think they're always blaming us for everything. They criticize us about everything we do. Like I said, just for being single. I think this one woman was on this this live and she was talking about how now mind you, what I'm about to say is like she didn't have to do this, but this is what she felt she had to do. So she was on the live and the guys were talking to her about her choices she made. And she said, well, you know, I'm a business owner, but, you know, I went through a lot of medical things and I had to do, you know, I didn't have medical insurance. Nobody was going to help me. So I had to do what I had to do. And I went and strip. I was a stripper and I had to do what I had to do right. as a stripper to get the money I needed to take care of my medical bills. And I think, you know, they kept saying to her, one of the guys said, was that the, was that the only thing you can do to get your medical bills paid? And she was like, I mean, what else did you want me to do? What else could I have done? And when I heard her make that comment, I realized that there are some women who live in certain situations where right. that's probably all they know they can do. Do you know what I mean? Like other people may think that, oh, no, I'm going to go and do this and I'm going to do that. Where some women might say, mm -hmm. well, this is all I see. This is all I know how to get fast money. Because I think and, the whole uh, thing sure about it was, it was, a lot of money she it was about too. fast money. It was a lot of money. Oh, yeah. Because yeah, she had brains. She had a brain Forget tumor. about it. And so she didn't have any medical insurance and she had to find a way to quit. She wasn't going to get insurance one because it's a pre-existing condition. So nobody was going to insure her. But I think it was just the way that they said like, oh, well, that's the only thing you can do. You couldn't find nothing else you could do. And she just kept going back to the same thing and they were just completely judging her. And, you know, she's has turned her life around. She has multiple businesses now and she has kids and she's a different kind of woman. But she was like, in my past, this, I right. did whatever I had to do to make sure I was good. And I'm just like, for me, it's the judgment that black men put on us. It is the judgment. It's like, how dare you? They think their, their walk in life is much harder than ours. And I'm like, not saying it's, it isn't, but I'm just saying to be a black woman it's in corporate easy. America, like you just don't understand. A black man get way more. It's not. A black man gets in there way faster than a black woman would. They respect them way more. You know what I mean? So it's right. like we both and I have think struggles. At the end of the day, not just black men, men and women need to learn how to interact with each other much better. And it's difficult for us because we weren't raised in that situation. Men don't know how to be men. Women don't know how to be women. You understand mm -hmm. to a certain extent because roles are mixed, mm -hmm. you know, and I think that we as a whole, yeah. we need to make yeah. sure other people see positive black families and black relationships and how to interact with each other. And I think that we yeah. need to have more of mm -hmm. that on a screen, more of that on TV and more of that in the community, yeah. you know, and. And I think at the end of the day, I think we all need to stick together and we need to make sure that we take up for each other and support each other. And I don't think that's what's going on. We need more of that. Yep. And it's sad, but I don't even know yeah. if I even want to talk about this, but to know that those cops killed that gentleman. Five caught cops. And yeah. They're black. Yep. How are you going to kill your brother like that? Yep. Literally. It's, it was like and a black on black crime. It was a black on black crime. Shooting. That we, yep. we shoot each other, we stab each other, we kill each other. It's like, yep. why are we so angry with each other? Mm -hmm. We need to learn how to come together and and support and love each other. And I think at the end of the day, we need that like now. Now. Yeah, because if you look at it, the Jewish community, they stick together. They got their own businesses. They got their own stores. Like you will never see no crime, that, that no part. Jewish on Jewish type of crime. Do you understand what I'm saying? In their Hasidic Jewish community, you just, you really don't see it. 
they really stick together and they really support each other. They support their their people. And you're right, as black people, if we could be just a just a small portion of that, because what happens to Tyree Nichols was just like the most disgusting thing that could have ever happened to any young black man. It was just when I mean I couldn't even watch the full video. I only watch a few minutes of it. And it was like, I mean, watching that video changes you. You know what I mean? So disturbing. And it was so disturbing. You know how he was so un- unprotected by the people who was, you know, who was in that position to protect. And he was unprotected. And then they wonder why black people don't like cops. It's particularly black cops. It's not just a white cop. White cops are racist. Yes, they are. But they say black cops are the worst. And obviously... Seeing that video, that was, they proved that. Why would you like? Why, why did they get who so does angry? That? At the end of the day, I, I mean, from what I saw from the video, there was more than one video out there. I couldn't see the whole thing. I couldn't watch it. It yeah. showed when they pulled. It was him a lot over. of videos he mm-hmm. because he was petrified. I be he was mm-hmm. scared at the end of the day. And, he was you know, scared. He wasn't being. He, he, I didn't feel that the way he was reacting, the, they shouldn't have escalated it the way that they did. I I don't feel that he deserved yeah. any of it yeah and i feel it was it was so yeah it, it hurt more to see that it was black cops that did it versus the white cops because it's like yo that's their brother like what are you doing yeah i just don't get it yeah it's and so allegedly is what they're saying is that one of the police that Tyrese i said was that the other the day i said there mothers. has to be something else i you know i they I don't know how true it is because they said what he did was that once they got through beating him, this particular police officer took a picture of him it and sent it to else. his baby I mother. I knew it because you just don't, and it's not no traffic stop. Yeah. And you're just going to beat the crap out of somebody just because of what they, the traffic. And the person, the whole he's, time. And he was handcuffed the whole time. The whole and now entire this, time. Whatever cop, if that's true, he ain't going to see no kids. He ain't going to see no baby mama. Because at the end of the day, it's ruined. Oh no! But you know his if life is ruined. Cop, if it was his life cop, is ruined, you know, his family life is ruined. Still getting paid. Oh yeah, that's what I'm saying. They they could they charge oh, these black cops quickly. White cops take forever to get charged, even if they they still haven't charged the people who killed um. What's the woman name in, oh God, yeah, Brianna Taylor. And, they still haven't, and, they, they've never been charged, any of them. I think they're all still working. But yet these five black cops got ch- charged. At six the end of the, of the now, day, it, is it don't matter, quickly. It don't matter no, what position you have. No nothing. Don't matter what position you have. At the end of the day, you're yep. black and you That's never true. get treated the same. Even that guy who was the, the anchor, I think it was ABC, mm-hmm. he was having an affair with his with the uh, lady. Who lost? Who lost their job? Oh God! Yes. Who kept, yep. who kept their job? He did. He did. They found a reason. Yeah, they found a reason mm-hmm. to get rid of him. She Not got to say that He didn't have mm-hmm. the right. They didn't have the right to fire him, but they should have fired her too. Why she get the? To... Because, because at the end you of the day, like you said, <laughs> black people. It don't matter what rules. you are. That's what it is. You because you're black, is different rules. It, you can do about it. People, it doesn't matter. People just don't. Mm-mm. I don't know. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. As as a people, you know what I mean? We really, we still have a long way to go. You know what I mean? To be able to come together. It is sad. It is sad. And like Jackie said, we are the most unprotected, you know, women in the country. You know what I mean? They don't, our black men don't protect us. The, the police, the white men don't protect us. Nobody protect us. And then people get mad when we have to learn how to protect ourselves. You know what I mean? And it's because we have to. Right. We have to learn how to protect ourselves right. because who else is going to do it for us? It, and it's sad that... Who else is going to do really it? It's really sad. Mm-hmm. It is sad. And like I said, I've just been seeing a lot of these conversations floating around um, social media. And I just wanted to talk about it because I'm like, I, I got to talk about it with my girls because this shit's getting on my nerves. I'm tired of seeing it. And it's so crazy. <laughs> I be wanting to join the lives. <laughs> You know, Jackie, I want to join the lives. And I'm like, man, if I get on this live, it's going to blow it off. It's going to be When I get on here, I'm about to tell these people something. Because especially when they start talking about marriages and roles and roles and marriages when none of their asses are married now. It's always people who are leading conversations who are not married to talk about what marriage is and what marriage roles and stuff like that should be. When I'm like, you ain't even fucking married. So how you know? that's, That's a conversation that nobody should be having if you're definitely not married. (laughs) 
you're definitely not married and it's like stop having those type of conversations you don't even know what you're talking about and um but you know what i want to switch gears because i want to i'm gonna go back up to i want to bring in another video to talk about something that's trending on social media and it's um nikki no, do you I watch don't. the real housewives of potomac but you know what it's okay you're gonna be able to understand <laughs> once we do this okay because this is something that's been going around and been trendy so basically on the real housewife of potomac robert dixon and her husband um juan you know they're ma- they're getting married and allegedly he has been cheating and so throughout this whole season they've been talking about it's been brought up by one of the um cast member which is karen <laughs> the grand dom <laughs> and she <laughs> she's the grand dom honey and she brought it up and she was talking about how one has another woman who kind of looked like her he got caught in georgetown holding hands with her walking around right so the other day me and Jackie was definitely trying to find the audio for the podcast. So Robin and Giselle are, you know, they're two cast members. Mm-hmm. They have a podcast called Reasonable Shady. And they were on the podcast. Robin revealed on the podcast that yes, it is true. You know, Juan was cheating. He was cheating with a woman. And we because she DM me, wanted to confess the whole cheating thing to me. And um and oh, so recently. Uh, oh, this yeah. is before. No, I think well, you know what? I think it must have happened during taping oh you know what i'm saying that this she season. found out Whoa. this season mm-hmm. oh. so she found out this season and she said it was something that they were going through they were dealing with it and she was like well i was waiting she said because i know the woman emailed like multiple cast members and she was like i was waiting for one of the cast members to say something but i'm like um karen did say something you kind of just got <laughs> super mad with her <laughs> she did and so here is so carlos king which is like Mr. King of reality. You know, he's like the black version of Andy Cohen. And he does all these different reality shows. Jackie has a personal relationship <laughs> with him. Um, so I don't know if you want me to talk that yet. But because that's not a man, personal. And, or, not a personal. I, I, I mean, like I a, a, a business relationship. Yes. A business relationship. Yes. yes. It's just a business relationship. I'm sorry. <laughs> let me correct it. Um, I, wish so, I, had, I wish I had a personal because I call him. I know, like, right? A business relationship with him. But I'm going to play this clip. I wanna, I'm going to share my screen because I want you guys to see what he says. I am pissed. Robin admitting that she hid her story from the world on the show that pays you is a slap in the face to everyone Sorry, involved, I'm trying to get it to be the big the one audience. on the screen. And, I can't and the get fact it. that you have the audacity to go on your podcast to reveal this, we spent this entire half-ass season with these made-up <laughs> storylines about Chris Bastin. <laughs> and I'm going to say made up because I, allegedly, <laughs> was told that a few of the housewives had a meeting before filming about what the storyline was going to be and that this Chris Bassett stuff was 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 part of that conversation. I've always said there was something off about this season and now I know what it is. None of y'all are living your real lives. Mm-hmm. Your admission, Robin, has proven the fact that Potomac is nothing but a show about women exposing each other and and throwing each other under the bus. It's not about real friendships, real relationships, or your real life. It's not about that anymore. I feel like the only persons who I'm really saying, want I'm to saying. give their real lives and, and really are looking for a connection with the cast is Candace, Wendy, Child, even <laughs> Mia. The OGs, y'all are a big disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> so... <laughs> When I saw this clip, right, it was just like, first of all, I saw the episode, Nikki. I'm so girl. Listen, you have to watch. The, do you watch the Housewives? Or do you watch any of the Housewife franchises? Do you not, not are you not a reality TV, TV junkie? junkie? I'm oh my God, Nikki, one. listen, me the and Jackie are reality TV junkies. You yes. know what I mean? I mean, the, the thing about it is that he, <laughs> he spoke <laughs> truth. And I, I love that 100%. As, as a person who, I mean, this is what he does. He is the reality mm-hmm. show king. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
but but to be the king you have to be a fan right of reality yep. tv and when you go on to these shows you want to show your real life you want to yep. show you know what i mean you don't it's not to say you have to give mm. everybody everything to everybody like i'm i'm, I'm, I'm gonna give it all but you want to have some right. authenticity right so I, I i really respect that he brought it to life in that kind of way because yeah the, and especially the way editing showed that yeah chris, chris is a is a guy that they that got a lot of heat this yeah. um season, this season. In, on the show mm -hmm. uh, about things that really weren't wow. even going on you know mm -hmm. it was a made of storyline but there was an actual storyline but you know um so I, I i love how he 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 dropped that and but then she went on her platform and talked about it her own personal platform she and, did. And, and gave the story as opposed to the show well maybe we need to have so a, a day of so, yeah. watching this stuff so you can catch me up so i can start watching Oh, it's it, it's Girl, good. I want to. I, I haven't watched it, and I was trying to catch up because I've been so busy. Um, I didn't get to watch the last episode, and I only got to listen to. I don't even know if that's the 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 um the show that I listened to on the podcast. If that was mm -hmm. the one, I didn't get to it before we got yeah. on here. But you know, I try like um you mentioned. I was I had the privilege of of having um an experience, a working experience with yeah. uh, with Carlos King and. Um, he's authentic, you know, and so mm -hmm. the, what he gives, what, what, I, when I met him, um, just working on a show that, that we were, uh, trying to work on, you know, he, mm. he's a, he's a real guy, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And so he's a yeah. fan, he's a fan and of I what like he does. That he's a fan. I he's like a fan that about of him. His, yeah. He's a mm -hmm. fan of his work, you know, mm -hmm. and, and other shows. And mm -hmm. so if anybody's going to know how you're supposed to bring it and, and, and the rules and the protocol for how you show up, you know what I'm saying, on a TV show, he's going to yeah. know because he's been in reality forever. So, you know, I, I say hats off for, for keeping it 100 yeah. as an executive because, as, you know, sometimes, yeah. uh, sometimes, you it's know, a real person. he's a real person. And I, mm -hmm. and I love that he showed, hey, as a viewer, right, right. You, mm -hmm. you cheated us. There is one show yeah. I watched. You know what I mean? Um, you cheated mm -hmm. us. Let me think of the name. Mm. <laughs> it's the one where they're dating and it starts off with like 10 guys and 10 girls. People get kicked off. Ready to love. I oh, ready, ready to love. love. I watch every watch. single season. Oh, yeah, yeah. There's one show that I do watch. Oh, I'm yeah. I'm currently watch watching this season. Too, I'm, I'm currently like, watching this season. Yeah. Listen, reality TV is just I like love a reality state. TV. I, it I is. Do. And the reason why I show the one, the clip from Carlos, because this whole thing with Robin, first of all, has just been trending on social media. You know what I mean? The show has been trending. The episode has been trending. And when she came out, I just happened to come across that video, the um, audio of her talking on her podcast on TikTok. I think it was TikTok, Instagram. I can't remember which one because I tried to find it. But I didn't see Carlos' reaction to it. It was, like it was so authentic. I, I it was so it. authentic because he it's like being, you are the reality being... show. You got to yeah. show it, and they did make up this bullshit stuff about Chris Bassett this well, season. I, I was just like, what are they talking about? It didn't even make season. sense. I mean, the series, series. I got to start from the beginning. You, you, you gonna have, have to go better though. Start from the beginning. You can't. Yeah, you can't. Worry, you you can't start at this season. You're gonna have to go way back. You're gonna have. Yeah, you're gonna have to go way back and kind of got to follow. Follow. Follow you can't the just story. start watching. Start it's a watching good from season. Season. Yeah. It's a good season because they've had a very rocky type of relationship. You know what I'm saying? And so it was good to see. It really was good to see his reaction and his authenticity. And like you said, that's why people like him because it's so crazy because he was just on their podcast. You know what I mean? He was <laughs> just on their show. I, I, didn't say I gotta watch that too. <laughs> I'm so, he was I, just I on reality, the podcast. But I've been behind. I've been behind on all the shows. I, I have not watched Love and Hip Hop back in the day. With I my don't shows. watch that anymore. Did that still on? Love and Hip Hop. Oh my goodness. I that is yeah. still on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know what? I like Ready to Love because one, some did. people found real love on there. You yeah. know what I mean? Some people find real love, real connections. And you know what? I was just watching an episode in this girl season, the current season. And, you know, the girl was on there and she was just crying because it's what we hear from so many single women. And she was just like, she's super successful. You know what I mean? And she was like, she's been single for so long. You get to a point where you feel like, mm -hmm. is it ever going to happen? You know what I mean? I and you kind of just give up on finding, you know, on finding love. And I'm like, it is the story of almost every single woman that's dating right now is that it is so hard for them to find good men. It's so far for them to find men who are really serious right. about being with someone. 
you know, because it seemed like a lot of these men are just kind of just playing games with people's emotions and not being authentic. But it's not only the men, it's want. also the women. They don't know what they and want. They, they they feel entitled to sometimes. Yeah. And they, they, they're very disrespectful to yeah, men as well. And they true. also are strong and mm-hmm. they don't know how to be a woman, if that makes any sense. You know, I mean, a lot of them are angry. Yeah. We have yeah, angry men, angry women because of stuff that happened in their past. And yeah, at the end of the day, we got to stop fighting, each other, mm-hmm. start loving each other, you know. And uh, I think that um, some people's realistic, some people's goals or what they think love is or what they want is unrealistic, you know. And um, mm-hmm. I, I hear some women who are out there who are dating, even at my job, I'm like, you stop dating them for, for that reason? Or you're dating somebody and that's what they're doing yeah. to you? Like, I don't think people people are just lost. Yeah, you know. And at the end of the day, it's 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 sad. Yeah. But, um, I, I think we're going to get it together. I, I'm hearing Black Wall Street coming back around, yeah. and I'm loving the hearing about that with the entrepreneurship mm-hmm. and, and businesses and stuff. But we have to do yeah. something to get our family back. I think we've been battling for years since you know slavery and everything. We need to we need to find a way back yeah. to each other. That's what we need to do. Yeah, and I think that women and black men and black women really need to sit down and have real conversations. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? About the blaming because that blaming piece to me mm-hmm. comes from a place of hurt from them. You know what I mean? Like who hurts you in your life now that you're blaming black women for whatever happened to you as a black man or whatever shortcomings you may have. You know what I'm saying? Like who hurts you to the point where you have to judge a woman if she wearing a wig, you know what I'm saying? If she's not right. wearing natural hair, she's not for me, which everybody fine. has their preference and that's cool. But yeah, the same, the same time, you don't have to put another woman down just because she do wear that. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I love I do my too. wigs, baby. I okay. Do too. <laughs> <laughs> no, <I'm saying>. Okay. <laughs> and I don't care I do what too. you say about it. I'm going to keep it. <laughs> you know, ain't nothing wrong with switching it up. You know, it's, it's that it's that judgy Ain't spirit. Nothing. It's the judgy it's spirit. spirit. That's that what it is. Spirit. It's the judgy spirit. Oh my god, my dog <laughs> hit my camera, guys. Hold on. It's okay. Yeah, yeah it, it it is, and I, I think it's that judgy spirit. People always got something to say. Always always got something to to evaluate. But always, you know, they, always they talk what they what they say. They talk about the spec. In, in, in my in, eye, but yeah. not seeing the dirt in yours. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah. Come yep. on. Yep. Everybody, oh, everybody got something to say about everybody else, and but can't check in with themselves. Can't check they in can. with themselves, and that's what the problem is. You know. Another so, thing I noticed. Hopefully, we'll we'll have a conversation when it comes to mm-hmm. you know people who are dating right now. They have a tendency to be mad at somebody and take it out on everybody they're dating. I think they forgiveness is the oh, key. Yeah. Baggage. It's the baggage they carry. They need to unpack it. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I, I mean, I check mm-hmm. myself. You know, I'm married and I've realized there's certain things that I do. I'm like, well, wait a minute. That yeah. ain't got nothing yeah. to do with the situation. Or why am I acting this way? Or why do I think this way? Or why am I doing certain things? You know, and you'd be surprised yeah. how a lot of stuff from your past really sticks with you and, 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 affects the way that you respond to a lot of things and people so yeah Mm -hmm. yeah it does i mean our past really does our experiences affect Mm -hmm. how we approach life you know what i mean it really do you know so it's it's a part of all of that the mental capacity on how we deal with life how we deal with people Mm -hmm. how we do situations you know what i mean and so you know so crazy i was doing a i was having a conversation i was talking about you know i'm trying to lose weight you know i'm trying to redefine my mm-hmm. relationship with food and so i was like you know because we eat when we're sad we eat when we're happy and when i think about it i thought about it, i said you know what it's so crazy that this is like generational um habits of eating because when you think about it, it's like we eat of course at parties and celebrations right and then when we go to funerals we eat, <laughs> we eat there too, there too. <laughs> so it's like that's what i'm saying so it's like we've always we've learned over the years of growing up that you attach your emotions to food because we got that repass and we all looking forward to that repass off that funeral because fried chicken gonna be good (laughs) and that fried chicken gonna be good so you know i'm like man this is this is why it's been this is why i think the struggle is so hard because we have been raised and breaded to know that when we are happy this is what we eat when we're feeling sad this is what we do we eat and i'm like and i 
and I have to break that relationship that I have with food. I, I mean, how else am I going to get this look, weight off? I'm of my struggling chest? with mine as well, too. And I'm going to be transparent with you because uh, I was feeling for some ice cream. And when I went to Target today, I bought me some <laughs> Talenti's ice cream. I've never had Talenti's, but I said, you know what? I want to try Talenti's. And I got cookies and cream, and it's like a different layers. Is, is it the one in the is that plastic container? Um, is it like a jar? jar? And it's like it's see a jar. so you can see the yeah, ice like, cream. It looks yeah, like a relaxer so jar. Yeah, I, I love oh, the Caribbean. Oh, God, I need to try that. Look at that. How, let me tell you, I'm going to be really transparent. <laughs> Why did I get some ice cream? And then I had the audacity to work out eating the ice cream. <laughs> while you in while the beginning you, you were eating of my workout, no. I was eating the ice cream. I'm like, what are you doing? No, wait, 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 wait. You thought you was burning the were, calories? No, what were you eating? Just to clarify, you <laughs> ate the ice cream before the workout, before or while and you were in working the beginning out? of the workout because. So while, wow, so why wow. while I was working, out. working, and I said th- this that's, next, that's level next level, shit. and I'm that like, is next level. but I saw that somebody, I saw somebody do that online the other day. They were like, look. Don't, don't judge me because I'm moving I, while I'm I, eating. At least, at I least I'm doing out. that. And I didn't even oh have a God. lot of ice cream. I just had a little bit. You understand? I just needed that. Today wasn't a good day, and I also feel like I'm feeding for sugar. Maybe I'm PMS, and I don't know. You know. So at, at the end of the day, mm-hmm. I well, we're we're addicted we to sugars. That's that's definitely a cult. That's definitely a world we thing. Are. But it's, cult- it's definitely they say a sugar culture is thing. like cocaine. Yeah, like it, that's how addictive it is. Oh, yeah. it's a, it's a, it's addictive. It's I mean, a, and people think that addiction. People that uh, that say, "Oh, I don't eat sweets," but if you eat carbs, it sure does. It turns into sugar. So, and and, sugar. and and and, and <laughs> but this it's an emotion because even alcoholics to they're the, actually to addicted sugar. to sugar. To sugar. Yeah. Right. Listen, so my advice is salty things. So I'm addicted to chips. I mean, no, I just but, am. No, but it's the, it's the carbs. Yeah, it's carbs. everything turns. That's what sugar. it is. Same thing. And, mm-hmm. It turns and, into and sugar. Then, sugar. Then, That's exactly what it is. So you're right. It's the addiction to sugar. <laughs> and and it's an emotion. It's an emotional thing. It's a life thing. Like life. Ha- like these life happenings. That because you know life be life and life. You know that's what we're having them for. You know yeah. that's that's been our lifeline. Our life. Life be and life having yep. a moment. And that's you see our relationship with food. I'm an emotional mm-hmm. eater. How do I we? We gotta redefine that. it. I am too. You're happy. I think you're sad. Is, to you're be glad, with you're you. mad. Let me eat something good. Let yep. me eat something good. You yep. know. We're all about. Oh, I just want to <laughs> go somewhere, have a good drink, a nice drink, and some good food. I'm like that even when I'm on a workout regimen. And I am I'm on a workout about regimen the, about whatever. Yeah, I am Man. too. Me too. But I still am thinking about how can I make my smoothie so creamy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Where it emulates that. <laughs> or, where it emulates a milkshake. A milkshake. Yeah. <laughs> I started making overnight oats. How can I have so good? Oh, right. You but you know, the, the one but, it's a recipe for it. Not that I'm going to make that one, yeah. but I'm just saying. You why not? Make it. No, you I'm sound like I'm going to make a banana bread. But why not? Banana bread flavor. They got strawberry milk. <laughs> I don't care. Eat them all. <laughs> I'm going to try it because. Make them all. Jackie okay. said, make them all. I'll come over and try yeah, it with you. It's good. The overnight oats. Why stop at For one? Peanut butter, some honey, <laughs> cinnamon, vanilla. Oh, it's so good. Strawberries and blackberries they- and blueberries. Can't tell me nothing. You see what I'm saying? Listen to and me I- talk about it, and that's how much I want it because I'm here Girl. talking about it right now. That's how much I want it. And I'm on the <laughs> detox. Okay. <laughs> and I've been thinking nothing but, but about food other than the food I'm eating. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Look, you got to eat something, you know, a little bit of everything now and then. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? And I think that's... No. You know what it comes down to? It and, comes down to portion control. And that's moderation. Really what it comes down to. That. Mm-hmm. You can have what you want. It's about the portions, man. That's really what it is. You know, and once we can master that, then we can master this weight loss and head man, on to victory, right? I feel like I've tried everything. I don't know. I'm just... I think I, <laughs> I think I to, have to. I think I, I think we all have. where I am and... Stop trying to be something from what I was 20 years ago or something. You know, mm-hmm. maybe this is just what I'm supposed to be right now. And I don't know. I, <laughs> I think I, I think it's because it goes back to the beginning of the show. It's because we because of blame. You know what I'm saying? Blame, it's Jackie. the blame. It's the blame. <laughs> it's the blame. They say we got to be fine and fit. You know what I'm saying? You got to have a flat stomach and the big butt. We, we it's blame the blame for it. 
And we're blamed when we don't have it. We blame ourselves. So not only are they blaming us, but we blame ourselves. Double whammy, Let's talk right? about it. You know what? Yeah, that's that's, that's we, the truth. We blame ourselves, we blame ourselves and, and more than anybody else. And you know what? Here's the thing. It is it is um, the fact that people will accept. So so you can say whatever and you can blame whatever, but we actually internalize it. Yeah, so even though we think we're like, okay, but it's the internalizing of, of the blame, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And and the making us wrong, We because we already feel those think ways about ourselves yeah. is why we can ex- we accept that blame from society, that blame from our children, our brothers, mm-hmm. our husbands, yeah. or whatever. It's the, mm-hmm. it, we accept Friends, it family. And because we blame ourselves. Well, I need to stop blaming yeah. myself. Yeah, I need, that part I, I do. You see that part? That part was good, Jackie. It goes back to the we blame ourselves. It starts that with part. us. Yeah, it starts it, with it, us. Because guess what? Uh, what they say? Uh, what? What? Remember that thing? I'm gonna boomerang it back to you. Whatever you say, bounce <laughs> off. <of me. laughs> oh my god! <laughs> you used to say that. And say that. That's what we, we need to do with that. With that that those kids. words that come from them and come from us. That Boom is so it. true. Good. Return that to sender. I don't need it. What? That's, that's why we eat. Sticks, right. sticks on you. That's, a, yeah. that's why we eat. That's why we look <sighs> for a little comfort. And I, earlier in the conversation, I was going to say, you know, we have a problem as women of color, black mm-hmm. women, um, to vulnerability. Mm-hmm. It's very hard for people to take our pain seriously. Yeah. That's it why is. there's that when um, uh, there's a higher rate of something going wrong with with women when they have babies and mm-hmm. all that in the hospital because people don't really believe us when we say we are in pain. And I, yeah, they don't believe us. They don't protect her. Make sure you work in, that I exactly. have my patients back regardless, and especially I have a, a, a for my African American patients. I really make sure that I let the medical team yeah. know like look we need to take care of this patient they're complaining of x y and z yeah. and, and i try not to let people drag their feet or whatever the case may be but um yes we are not believed as a patient i don't understand why yeah so don't be judging us when we got a little little roundness going on we're a little thicker true. than than what the society say is, is a normal it's size to be. yeah right mm-hmm. we're at a higher rate because we got a higher Hello. stress level we trying we to find some comfort stressful. and you know this goes back to makes me think about is that whole thing with um megan the stallion Tori Lanez. Lanez. do you remember how when she came out yeah. she, he shot her right that whole situation that happened and when she came out and she kept saying that this is the person that did it and people i tell you they ridiculed her they talked so bad about her to the point where we don't even hear from megan right now she made a comment that she said in that comment that she felt so bad about what happened that she wished he would have just shot and killed her. That's what she, That's she, she said that. That's how much she was going through. But it just goes back to what you said in terms of like the blaming and not believing us when we're in pain or believing our story or sticking up for us or right. just supporting us. And now when that whole thing came out that he actually was the one that shot her. When they actually played the video of him recording of him talking, admitting it to one of his friends. Now everybody was like, oh my God. I don't even know why they even question that. Like, why would somebody lie about somebody? (laughs) They question it. Shooting. They didn't believe her. Nobody believed her. They did not believe her. Society. And what did his father say when he heard that video? Is he out there preaching, saying Jay Z is the problem? He ain't saying nothing. He ain't saying nothing now. Nope. He's not because he know his son did it. He, he was, was out there. I mean, he was on a tangent, tangent for real. Like he was blaming but, everybody else but, and not, oh, this person mm-hmm. did this, and and he was just mm-hmm. and the mother no too. accountability for no listen, accountability. There it goes. It's the same. That young it's man the same thing is the same situation where you with the, the blame is on the woman. The woman. You made yep. me do this. Yep. yep. Now I got to lie, and and you're not covering my lie for me now. Mm-mm. You know, you're not, you're not riding, you're not riding for me. Exactly. You're not covering up my life for me. You made me do it. You're the reason why I shot you and you know it. And now you need to protect me. That's exactly what it is. And it's horrible. hundred percent. It's horrible. It's horrible. Well, listen, guys, we are at the end of the show. 
this has been a great season one. I'm sorry, season two. Congratulations. Episode on season one. Two. Congratulations on your yes, season congratulations. two. Season two, guys. It's officially here. I took a little break throughout the holidays, you know, to kind of regather myself, get myself in order, get things organized. So I'm really happy that Jackie you know, and Nikki decided to do this with me. We're definitely going to do more shows together when you guys have the time because I know you guys, ladies are busy. <laughs> but <laughs> I just want to thank you guys for listening to the Girl Take No podcast. We release episodes Episodes, new episodes every Thursday. This podcast is available on all your favorite streaming platforms. So make sure you go and download the podcast so you can have it with you wherever you go. Take me to the gym with you. Okay, I can go with you on that walk. We can ride with you in the car. How do you choose to do it? But guys, thank you so much again for listening, and I'll see you guys next Bye. time. Bye.